Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with day 145, May 24th, Job chapter 22 to 24. Eliphaz silence, third debate, overview. Job's self-appointed counselors have run out of arguments, but not out of words. In the final round of debates, Eliphaz and Bildad take turns accusing Job of being the wicked man they have been describing all along. Eliphaz, following his cause and effect view of sin and suffering, continues to search for a secret sin in Job's life. In a desperate plea for acquittal, Job turns his glance heavenward. He laments that God is hard to find, 23 verses 8 and 9, and yet believes that God would give him a fair hearing if he could only find God. Chapter 22, Don't Sin, verses 1 to 20. Do Repent, verses 21 to 30. Eliphaz to Job. Chapter 23, Don't Hide from Me. Chapter 24, Do Vindicate Me. Job to God. Insight, Knowing the Judge, Job 23, 7. Though Job's friends saw God's courtroom as a place of condemnation, Chapter 22, verse 4, Job saw it as a place of refuge. 23, 7, guilty consciences want to flee God's presence. Job's conscience wanted to seek him out. Insight, Old Testament cattle rustling. Job 24, 3, Job 24, 3 states that the wicked take the orphan's donkey. Such an act would be damaging beyond repair. Often children would be unable to round up or recover the stolen livestock, a picture of utter helplessness and desperation. But such cold-hearted acts are not hidden from the Lord. Job chapter 22. Eliphaz's third response to Job. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, Can a person do anything to help God? Can even a wise person be helpful to him? Is it any advantage to the Almighty if you are righteous? Would it be any gain to him if you were perfect? It is because you're so pious that he accuses you and brings judgment against you. No, it's because of your wickedness. There's no limit to your sins. For example, you must have lent money to your friend and demanded clothing as security. Yes, you stripped him to the bone. You must have refused water for the thirsty and food for the hungry. You probably think the land belongs to the powerful and only the privileged have a right to it. You must have sent widows away empty-handed and crushed the hopes of orphans. That is why you are surrounded by traps and tremble from sudden fears. That is why you cannot see in the darkness and waves of water cover you. God is so great, higher than the heavens, higher than the Father's stars. But you reply, That's why God can't see what I'm doing. How can he judge through the thick darkness? For thick clouds swirl about him, and he cannot see us. He is way up there, walking on the vault of heaven. Will you continue on the old paths where evil people have walked? They were snatched away in the prime of life. The foundations of their lives washed away. For they said to God, Leave us alone. What can the Almighty do to us? Yet, he was the one who filled their homes with good things. So I will have nothing to do with that kind of thinking. The righteous will be happy to see the wicked destroyed, and the innocent will laugh in contempt. They will say, see how our enemies have been destroyed? The last of them have been consumed in the fire. Submit to God, and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. 
If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. If you give up your lust for money and throw your precious gold into the river, the Almighty himself will be your treasure. He will be your precious silver. Then you will take delight in the Almighty and look up to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you. And you will fulfill your vows to him. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do, and light will shine on the road ahead of you. If people are in trouble and you say, help them, God will save them. Even sinners will be rescued. They will be rescued because your hands are pure. Job chapter 23. Job's eighth speech. A response to Eliphaz. Then Job spoke again. My complaint today is still a bitter one, and I try hard not to groan aloud. If I only knew where to find God, I would go to his court. I would lay out my case and present my arguments. Then I would listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he use his great power to argue with me? No, he would give me a fair hearing. Honest people can reason with him. So I would be forever acquitted by my judge. I go east, but he is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north, for he is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. But he knows where I am going. And when he tests me, I will come out as pure as gold. For I have stayed on God's paths, and I have followed his ways and not turned aside. I have not departed from his commands, but I have treasured his words more than daily food. But once he has made his decision, who can change his mind? Whatever he wants to do, he does. So he will do to me whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. No wonder I am so terrified in his presence. When I think of it, terror grips me. God has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me. Thick, impenetrable darkness is everywhere. Job chapter 24. Job asks why the wicked are not punished. Why doesn't the Almighty bring the wicked to judgment? Why must the godly wait for him in vain? Evil people steal land by moving the boundary markers. They steal livestock and put them in their own pastures. They take the orphan's donkey and demand the widow's ox as security for a loan. The poor are pushed off the path. The needy must hide together for safety. Like wild donkeys in the wilderness, the poor must spend all their time looking for food, searching even in the desert for food for their children. They harvest the field they do not own and they glean in the vineyards of the wicked. All night they lie naked in the cold, without clothing or covering. They are soaked by mountain showers, and they huddle against the rocks for want of a home. The wicked snatch a widow's child from her breast, taking the baby as security for a loan. The poor must go about naked without any clothing. They harvest food for others while they themselves are starving. They press out olive oil without being allowed to taste it, and they tread in the winepress as they suffer from thirst. The groans of the dying rise from the city, and the wounded cry for help. Yet God ignores their moaning. Wicked people rebel against the light. They refuse to acknowledge its ways or stay in its paths. The murderer rises in the early dawn to kill the poor and needy. At night he is a thief. The adulterer waits for the twilight, saying no one will see me then. He hides his face so no one will know him. Thieves break into houses at night and sleep in the daytime. They are not acquainted with the light. The black night is their morning. They ally themselves with the terrors of the darkness. But they disappear like foam down a river. Everything they own is cursed, and they are afraid to enter their own vineyards. The grave consumes sinners, just as drought and heat consume snow. Their own mothers will forget them, maggots will find them sweet to eat.
No one will remember them. Wicked people are broken like a tree in the storm. They cheat the woman who has no son to help her. They refuse to help the needy widow. God in his power drags away the rich. They may rise high, but they have no assurance of life. They may be allowed to live in security, but God is always watching them. And though they are great now, in a moment they will be gone like all others, cut off like heads of grain. Can anyone claim otherwise? Who can prove me wrong? My Daily Walk There is at least one thing Eliphaz and Job agreed upon. They both were appalled at the treatment received by the orphans. Eliphaz stated in 22.9 that the wicked crushed the hopes, literally arms, of orphans. The rightful privileges and means of support for orphans were taken away. Their boundary markers were moved, their flocks were driven off, they were left cold, hungry, and at the mercy of the elements. But the God of all mercy had not forgotten them. God has a special place in his heart for the fatherless and orphan. Psalms 82 verse 3 exhorts us to give justice to the poor and the orphan. Do you know of a single parent home in your neighborhood or a family that is destitute because of unemployment or illness? You can and should pray for them, but don't stop there. Carve out some time to spend with the fatherless youngster. Call up a needy neighbor and invite him or her over for dinner. If you have Christ, you have something to share. We must learn to regard people less in the light of what they do or fail to do, and more in the light of what they suffer. That is such an awesome statement. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day, and God bless, and I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.